joined now by Bobby Plum himself, of course. If you're, you know, common with knowledge about the Hoosier movie, then you for sure know who this gentleman is. But uh, we appreciate you joining us here this morning. And we were talking here about everything that's happened in your life. And for a split second, do you ever think where you'd be right now had you missed that shot or had it gone a different direction? No, I'd rather not think about that, Sarah. Uh, things have been uh, wonderful for my life. I, I did an interview, I forget who it was with, uh, about two months ago, and at the end of the interview, he said, you know what I think about whenever I talk to you? He says, uh, it's that movie that's coming up on Christmas. It's a wonderful life. And I said, uh, thankfully, I have had one. Absolutely, and, and the memorabilia and things that you have here at, at the bar and things that you've collected over the years, you said it's amazing the amount of feedback and the people and the fans that come and see you. You said coast to coast and then other countries, correct? Yeah, you know, it's a, uh, uh, the movie Hoosiers have just taken this thing worldwide. I think I told you when you came in, in the, uh, since September, I have received three letters from kids in Paris, France, asking for my autograph. And I also told you that there's a museum in Milan, just Milan 54 Museum. It's been there 22 years. A lady started it in a corner of her antique shop. And it, they raised $350,000 three years ago, renovated the old Milan State Bank building. And within the walls, they have the largest collection of the uniforms in the movie Hoosiers. Not just the Hoosiers, they have all the opponent's uniform. They have the bed that Dennis Hopper slept in. They also have an eight foot tall by four foot wide, two students at Purdue, two engineering students, listed all 752 schools and has the score of every school all the way out to the state tournament. And that museum has had visitors from all 50 states and 38 foreign countries, including Saudi Arabia, Japan, New Zealand, Australia. It, it's just been, uh, you know, it's taken a life of its own. And, but they made such a wonderful movie. It isn't just a basketball movie. There's a lot of things in that movie that they really captured. And by the way, they estimated in 1954, they estimated 90% of the adult population in Indiana watched uh, or listened to that game. And we stayed in Indianapolis that night, drove 80 miles down to Milan. It's Milan's just 45 miles due west of Cincinnati. They had state police there because there wasn't anybody left in town. And they're guarding the town and everything. We get to Sunman nine miles away, and people are walking. We thought there was an accident. The state police estimated between 30 and 40,000 people came to this town of 1,100 that day. And you can't get that many people in a town of 1,100. It's just, uh, it, it, it is just absolutely amazing what has happened. So you've, you've talked about that movie and how Hollywood-esque. A lot of people want to know, is it, did it really pan out that way? When it comes down to the actual 16 seconds for that shot and that play, that was pretty true to reality, correct? It, it is actually exactly what happened. It, not the huddle. Uh, I'll tell you what happened in the huddle if you're interested later. But the last 18 seconds, uh, Angelo and David, uh, uh, the writer and co-producer and the director of the movie, asked me to show them where that shot was. And I had to ask people whether it was on the north or south end. I just remember. <laughs> but I knew where it was, so I pointed to the floor. And the last, at eight, that's the only truly factual thing in the movie. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, similarities, but it's the only factual thing in the movie, and that is exactly the way it happened. Well, you talk about the actual shot that you took, and here, you know, you have the photo behind us of the ball going into the net. That's the important one. <laughs> right, exactly. But there's no shot of you taking it until recently, and there was an artist that created what that would have looked like, correct? So now you actually have a photo. It's just more of a painting or a rendering, so to speak. Yes. Uh, 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 there's a uh, Graham Honecker He's at Butler University, and Butler... Uh, commissioned an artist, he was a wildlife artist, to actually recreate me releasing the ball. And I think it took him like eight months, and they, it, it's a perfect uh, resemblance of what it is. And at my 80th birthday party, which was held here, it was a surprise that they unveiled it, and they were, obviously, they're taking pictures and things, and there was a gentleman just in here that you saw and he wanted me to sign these uh, uh, pictures that he had. 
And one of the pictures that came out, it's got the, uh, it's got me releasing the ball, but then it, it, there's a, a snapshot, somehow, a reflection of me in that picture, and that wasn't planned. I mean, it just came out that way, but it's perfect. And I've had a lot of people, by the way, the Milan Museum, that 54 Museum, has that framed and background and everything for sale. If anybody would like to have them, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sure the Milan Museum would love to have them come down and see them. Absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us here on Basketball Day, Indiana, because, of course, you know, the high school basketball shot heard across the state that really is a true part of Indiana's history is, is going to go down in history forever. So thank you very much, Bobby, for joining us. Yeah, it's my pleasure, believe me.